QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 Import Bank Transactions into QuickBooks. Get ready because we bookkeeping pros are moving up the hilltop with QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022. Here we are in our QuickBooks Bank Feed Practice file going through the setup process with the view drop down, the open windows list on the left hand side, company drop down home page in the middle, maximizing the home page to that gray area. In prior presentations, we talked about setting up the bank feeds either through linking from the bank to the QuickBooks system or by downloading the transactions from the bank and then importing them into the QuickBooks system. system. That way, that second method possibly being useful in the event that you're trying to download a lot of transactions to upload them into QuickBooks and you might not be able to go quite so far back when you're linking to the bank. So now we want to take that data and we import it into the QuickBooks system. Once the data is import, whether we import it by downloading it from the bank and then importing it into QuickBooks or by connecting directly to the bank, we'll be at the same point having the data into the system in, in essence, bank feed limbo. And then we'll need to add it to the financial statement so it can be used to construct or check the financial statements. So we could then go to, if we go to the banking dropdown, we talked about the bank feeds and either setting up the bank feeds, the connection here. Now we've got the data that we downloaded from the, from the bank, which we could then import as a web connect. This is one way that you can do it. You can also set up your bank accounts by going to the lists drop down chart of accounts, and then you could set up a new account, account rise up and add a new account this way as well, which would be the bank account. And then it would ask you to set up your bank account information that way. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna minimize this. I'm gonna minimize this and go to our desktop. You'll recall this is the actual software. This is what we downloaded from the bank. And now we're gonna use that to upload. If you see the extension, it looks like a QBO extension, which reminds you of an online file. It's not an online data file. It's the bank file, which can then be used to upload the banking information to either the online version of the software or the desktop version. We also took a look at that data with regards to just a spreadsheet type program this is a cvs type of file we're going to be uploading this file which again you can do if i jump back on over to the quickbooks by going to the banking drop down bank feeds and then going to the import the web connect but it some recommends oftentimes to just double click on that file and open up the software and then it'll import it. So that's what we will do that way. Note that you wanna have this as the prior file that you had open. And then I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna say, are you sure you want to exit? I'm gonna say yes. And once it's closed, then I'm gonna go back to the desktop and find that file. So here it is. Remember, and this is not the software, it looks the same, but it's actually that QBO file, the data file, the transactions that we downloaded from the bank. I'm going to double click on it. It should then open up the software and populate or start to import the information or give us the wizard to do so from that point. So double click in here. So I had to input the password to open the file. And then we have this information. So QuickBooks has received new transaction data. Please indicate whether you want to import this data now or save the file for import later. We're going to import new transactions now. It says always give me the option for saving to a file when I download. I'm going to keep that on as the default for our reminder. And so it says to download and import sign in with your Intuit account. So I'm going to say, okay. So here's my Intuit account. It's trying to link to the online to make sure that I have an, an actual subscription model because I'm in 2022 and above where they have the subscription model. So I'm going to sign in here. So then it says you are downloading transactions for the following account. It gives the account detail here. We got the QuickBooks it does not have an online account to handle these transactions. Please use a, select in, a selection below. So now we can set up our account which is just going to be a checking type of account. If you already have one set up, it would be in the drop down here. We don't have any bank account type of account set up. So we're going to set up a new account. And then it says, do you want to create it called, you know, the, the checking for Wells Fargo? I'll just call it checking. And then you might, if you have multiple accounts, possibly with an institution, you might put like the last four digits. So I'll just give an imaginary last four digits here. And then I'll say checking, let's call it bank. And then we're going to go ahead and say 5746. Let's do it like that and say continue, continuing on. 
It says quite smallly here, very in a small text, your Web Connect data has been successfully read into QuickBooks. You can view the download data in BigFeed Center by selecting your financial institution. That is nice. So we're going to say OK and see what it pulls up for us here. So now it redid kind of our, our normal login. So I'm going to go to the View tab on the left-hand side, going back to the setup process, do the open windows on the left. And then it says here, advanced bank feeds, a faster and improved way to categorize your bank data, create enhanced rules and contrast to your books. We will talk about rules later, but I'm not, I'm not going to look at that now. I'm going to say close that for now. I'm going to maximize my home page over here, maximize in it, and then it, take, and then it opens up the bank feeds. So the bank feeds are opened up. Whenever you go into bank feeds now, you can, you can basically close this back out if it was closed. Imagine it, it was closed. And then we can go to the banking. And then if I go to bank feeds, we now have the bank feed center, which we didn't have before because we didn't have any bank feeds set up. But now we totally do. If I go on that, I'm going to say skip the intro. So skip the intro, por favor. I don't want to see that no more. And then we can maximize this screen. And this is going to be our bank feed information. You could then close the carrot on the left hand side. It gives you a little tag up top. They changed this last year to be a little look a little bit more like the online bank feeds, which is nice, except that they, they kind of left a lot of space up top for these tags, which gives you an option to, to toggle between the different types of bank feeds that you have up top. And so you don't get to see as many transactions basically down below. They, in other words, they kind of took up a lot of real estate on the screen. Now notice I have the screen zoomed in right now. So I'm kind of in a zoomed in mode. So I'll probably zoom it back out. I've got, I've got it zoomed in more than it needs to be because I think it would be better for presentation purposes. So I'll zoom it out in future presentations and we'll be able to see a little bit more transactions than on down below when we, when we look at it in that format. But you can see these items are in the unrecognized area. That means what I would call they're in bank feed limbo in essence. And then we're going to add those transactions. The little tag gives you the banking information that we're on. It gives you the number of transactions that are pending review that we got to go into and update. Note if, it is if, if I go up to the to the reports up top and go to the company and financial and, and take a look at like a balance sheet, for example, for the current year, there's nothing in there. Let's make this as of 12, 31, 2, 2, 1. And then let's go to the prior report, prior, the income statement, reports, drop down, company and financial, profit and loss. Let's make this from 010121 to 01 to 12, 31, 21. And there's no data in there, even though we imported the, the information into the bank feeds, opening the carrot on the left hand side, because they are currently in what I call bank feed limbo. So we're going to go through in future presentations and get a better idea of these transactions that are now in here, how we can navigate basically this screen, and then we'll go through and start to add these into the system. And as we do so, we'll talk about how they can increase or how we can, you know, what problems might happen as we add data. We'll take a look at the deposits and then we'll take a look at the, at the decreases, the checks and other decreases. We'll talk about memorizing transactions and automating this thing and making it more and more automated as we enter data month over month. It should get easier, should get faster if we got things set up correctly to do the data input for the second month, then from the first month and so on and so forth.